Uh, questions and comments? Uh, the Honorable Member for Mount Royal. Well, I, I, I regret, Madam Speaker, knowing my colleague's uh, wealth of knowledge on this and his participation in the uh, meetings of the Foreign Affairs uh, Subcommittee, I would like to invite him to uh, share more of his uh, thoughts and perspectives that the time did not allow him to do. The Honorable Member for Hamilton East Stony Creek. Well, again, as you saw, and I thank the member for uh, introducing this this way, it, it is something that your own passion for this is, is below the surface. And when you see Shirin and Body, or you see uh, the professors and the various people that come before us with these tragic stories, and, and, the, and the, it's not just the physical abuse that gets to a person. It's the systemic repression of a people and their what should be their democratic rights that at two levels you're pulled on this now on the international front we could talk about the threats to the world community and there's debate as to whether those threats are this real or maybe not that real but the threats internally to the people on the ground in this country are extremely real and as i said the hangings are every eight hours and when you know that they hang juveniles in that country, you're further disgusted and further troubled. So it, it is one of those things that I could probably go on even further, but perhaps there's more questions, so I'll, I'll take my seat. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Comments? Uh, the Honorable Member for Elmwood Transcona. Well, thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. I want to thank the member for his comments today on the uh, Take Note debate on Iran. And he's uh, brought uh, out uh, several important points. Uh, about the situation, the the question is, uh, we you know we had a take note debate on uh, on Egypt, uh, the Egyptian situation just uh, a week or two ago, and the question I'd like to ask him is, what does he think Canada can or should do about the situation at this point? The honourable member, member you know, for Hamilton East Stony Creek. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, the the thing that's critical here from the, the witness testimony we had is documentation, collecting of the facts so that the people of the world as well as the people of Iran understand what this government's guilty of and that the government of Canada can support the development of a center which helps with that documentation, be it in Canada or be it elsewhere. Because the one thing that will change governments is the information and the understanding by the people of that country the extent of the abuses. They know that their friends and neighbors disappear, but the extent of the physical abuse, the deaths, I doubt very much if they really understand the, the depth of the damage being done to the population of that country. So from my perspective, and the report speaks to this, and I would, would invite people to go online and look at the subcommittee report on Iran because it lays out 24 recommendations but the key to it is to get information out and educate the world on what is actually happening. Thank you Madam Speaker. Uh, questions and comments? Uh, the Honourable Member for Davenport. Thank you Madam uh, Speaker. I just want to um, alert to the, my Honourable Colleague that I just had gotten notice that um, two naval ships, uh, Iranian naval ships, have just gone into, moved into near the Egypt territory. I presume that this is sort of sort of Suez Canal. So I presume this is sort of a hostile act by Iran, but also uh, sort of a warning to the West probably that, uh, um, that, uh, that they don't want a similar uh, movement taking place in their countries what took place in Egypt. So it, it, it's another sign of, of this country creating instability in the whole region from its support to Hezbollah, to Hamas. It is certainly a, a regime that, that sponsors terrorism and, uh, and is, is quite frightening in terms of its action towards people and also to the international community. I thought that uh, given what's happened just, just a few minutes ago, whether the member has any comments or anything to add to that, uh, to that action by Iran. Uh, the Honourable Member for Hamilton East Stony Creek. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker. And, and uh, I'm not overly surprised at the news. I'm disappointed at the news. One of the things that, uh, that regimes such as this one do, it, it reminds you of that magician who keeps you occupied with one hand while they pick your pocket with the other hand. 
uh, sometimes some of the rhetoric and, and over-the-top expression or actions externally outside of the country is used to draw attention away from the very nature of what they're doing to the people within their country. I think we need to understand that we have to keep our focus right now very much so on the Iranian people and the suffering that's happening there and the courage that's being expressed as they take the streets once more. Thank you. Questions and comments? Uh, the Honourable Member for Elmwood, Transcona. Thank you, <coughs> Madam Speaker. And comparisons, of course, have been made with the recent situation in, um, in, uh, in Egypt. And, um, and I'm interested in knowing how, how the member feels about the role of, um, of technology, the Facebook and the Internet, uh, in, 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 a, in actually both of these mo uh, movements. But I'm, 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 I'm aware that the, uh, in, in, um, in Iran in 2009, you had a very well-educated, uh, very tech-savvy group of people uh, involved in the protests. And, and, and I know Al Jazeera has a, a big effect, I believe, anyway, on the, uh, the instant reporting, almost the CNN of, uh, of that area. So I'd like to ask the member just if you have any comments and thoughts about these points. Of the Honourable Member for Hamilton East Stony Creek. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker. And, uh, and I may be incorrect with the number I'm about to give, but I believe that the population of Iran is something like 65% under 40, somewhere in that area. If you go back to the election of President Obama, and you may recall that there was what they call a flash mob occurred outside of the White House, I think it was the White House, where this was not a, an announced event. This is where young people use Twitter and Facebook to say, come here, do this. Well, in a country of, of relative freedom like the United States has, they were able to do this and, and express their joy at the change in their government. In Egypt, Tunis, and in Iran, the use of this technology, there, if you watch pictures that, of the news in Egypt, you had dozens of ca cameras being held in the air by people recording the events. Now, fortunately, there was enough media, Western media, there able to capture that as well, which you won't see coming out of Iran. But it's that use of those tools that is so second nature to the generations that are there that has given life to this. People have been contained for so long by this regime, and they finally had that tool that allows them the connections needed. Now, the problem with technology is the regime itself will be able to tap into it and to some extent identify people, depends on the level of the sophistication of the security forces there. So there's an extreme high risk for people, but they are rising to this occasion. They're expressing the courage needed to change their world, and it's up to Canada and countries like Canada to support them. Uh, a very brief question, comment? The Honourable Member for Elmwood Transcona, very, very brief. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker. And uh, I know in the case of Tunisia and Egypt, we had a uh, leadership and leaders that were very corrupt and had, uh, I think in one case, uh, in Egypt, perhaps $70 billion that uh, is at, 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 at question here. Is, is this the same situation in Iran? Are we talking about a leadership there that's been able to be uh, co corrupt financially and amass uh, money, or is that, or is it a different issue? The Honourable Member for Hamilton East, Stony Creek. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker. I, I don't think the issue is to the extent we understand that the Mubarak family has something like $70 billion. But when you have absolute power in any country, it's open to abuse. Very clearly, there are people who, in the institutions of power, there's bribery systems and those things that are demands made on people. I was in Saudi Arabia in 1979. Uh, I went there as a contract with Bell Canada. Bell Canada had a number of Canadian managers, 1,500 over there in that country, to try to attempt to, to change the culture relative to the phone company, the management style. And uh, no offense to those managers, it was too systemic. You could literally pay a technician he would get you a telephone number, it would be connected, it would be connected in the switch center, there would be no record of it anywhere if you paid him enough of a bribe. These young men were driving around in Cadillacs. And in, in that time, in 79, the Cadillac were selling for $40,000 in that country. 
when you have the undercurrent of corruption, and it's tied to absolute power. So in answer to your question, I believe that with investigation, you will find massive amounts of money.